The national news recently said that the Sarasota housing market is one of the fastest declining markets in the country. Is that true? Well, I'm going to break it down. Hi, I'm Nick with the Unity Group. That article I'm talking about left out a ton of context and uh, really was just a gross whatever. Typically, uh, you know, if you watch my videos, you know that I always say that headlines do more to terrify than they do to clarify. So just want to commence with a real quick Sarasota housing market update for June 2023. Uh, also, June is National Home Ownership Month, and we recently had the Gallup poll come out. Now, this is 11 consecutive years that real estate has been voted the best long-term investment opportunity in the country, and I don't disagree with that. But we keep seeing things like this, right? 32% of the recent Fannie Mae uh, poll, these, this is done in December, 37% of them basically thought that home prices would be going down the next 12 months. That's That's this year, right? Keep in mind, that's the largest number recorded since they started recording in 2010, and it's almost double the second highest uh, year, right? So why are they why are they thinking this? Well, it's kind of the media reports that we get, right? And we're also seeing this actually continuing into this year. This is the beginning of this year with people still thinking that prices are going down, right? So <clears throat> let's take an accurate look here real quick. This what I want you to notice here, obviously, Case Schiller, FHFA, CoreLogic, Right. These numbers are slightly different from one another because each of them measures you know, slightly different parameters. But what we're looking at here is the overall trend. And what we're looking at is basically prices are starting to stabilize here this year. OK, uh, same thing. Zillow shows a stabilization. This is Fannie Mae. Realize this is a quarterly report. Q2 numbers are not out yet. But again, you can see the trend that things are starting to stabilize. Right. This is nationwide. Keep in mind that when we hear a lot of these things like this, this article I was just mentioning, right, a lot of times what they're doing is they're basically referring to, you know, pandemic type numbers. And I want to be uh, I want to be sensitive to this. I lost, you know, family members during the pandemic. I know a lot of people died, so I'm not trying to make light of it. But basically what happened during the pandemic is, you know, it changed a lot of people's paradigm on, on what, you know, a home actually meant. It, it all of a sudden it was, you know, your home, your office, your gym, your school, all these other things. Right. And what happened was. That basically resulted in the two greatest years of American real estate. So now that we're coming off of that, it, it's not quite fair to just look at those particular kind of anomaly years that had that extenuating circumstance that spurred on that growth, right? We really want to look for context over like the past, you know, four or five years or at least a couple of years, uh, you know, pre-pandemic. So looking at it this way, you know, home appreciation, you'll see a lot of media reports that say home appreciation is down. It is compared to the unicorn years. When we look at pre-pandemic though, we're pretty much right in line with where we need to be. Pending listings, same thing. Pending listings are down now. They are compared to the unicorn years. But again, when we look at uh, pre-pandemic, things are right in line. And almost every metric we look at, it's the same thing, right? Even this, people say, oh, buyer traffic's down. Well, it is compared to the unicorn years. But if you think about it, we have more buyer uh, activity than we had you know, prior to the pandemic, okay? Same thing, days on market. Uh, you know, inventory going up, all these other things, when you compare them, you know, to the unicorn years, yeah, uh, uh, of course, they're not going to be as good, just because those years were just incredible, right? But again, I don't want to say they were artificially created, they had, you know, a huge asterisk, a huge extenuating circumstance, right? Even foreclosures, yes, foreclosures are up right now, you know, compared to the unicorn years. And remember that we artificially, you know, we didn't allow foreclosures during that time. But when you look at it compared to what happened pre-pandemic, we're still in really good shape. OK, so when we're talking about Sarasota housing market, realize this is countywide. These are all different types of housing, single family homes, condos, townhomes, everything combined. These are all median numbers. Right. So uh, median sales price, 455 active market time, 26 days. You know, original percent of list price, almost 96%. Months worth of inventory, 3.2 months worth of inventory. Remember, six months of inventory is a healthy, balanced market. Seven months of inventory is a buyer's market. Four months of inventory is a seller's market. So we're still very much in a seller's market, right? And this is basically what's causing this stability, this price stability that we're looking at. It's simple supply and demand, right? Now, I always tell you that all the numbers above the line are our lagging indicators telling us where the market's been. Everything below the line are our leading indicators telling us where the market is actually going. And typically, we look at these percentages over here, realize these are year over year percentages. However, they're a little bit skewed, right? Because basically, we had, we know, halfway through last year, uh, right around August, September, when mortgage rates essentially doubled 
for the first time in the history of mortgage rates. Again, that was another anomaly that it skewed a lot of this data. So what I want you to do is kind of look at it like this. You know, if you look at median sales price right here, you see that we're kind of, we've been a little bit up and down, you know, towards the end of last year, again, due directly to those mortgage rates and essentially crushing buyer's affordability, but we're starting to trend back up, right? However, when you look at where we're at back to 2018, we're obviously in really good shape. We have not given those gains back, right? Same thing with closed sales. Closed sales, you know, up and down a little bit. But when we're looking at this, we're looking at this upward trajectory where we're at, right? And when we think about it across all the way back to 2018, the, the trend is really relatively stable, okay? Month supply of inventory, yes, inventory has definitely gone up, right? However, when you look at it where we were, you know, before the pandemic, we're still not where we need to be. We're still at incredibly low levels of inventory. And the same thing with median time to contract, right? Right now, this is essentially days on market, right? You see, this is kind of a little bit up and down here from the beginning of this year. However, when you consider where we're at before the pandemic, we're still selling things much quicker. So just wanted to give you a little bit of context with that. If you guys have, uh, you know, questions about what these numbers mean, what is your home worth? Is this a good time to buy or sell or whatever you've got going on? I'm more than happy to answer any of those questions. Just reach out. Thanks so much for tuning in. And remember, who you choose to negotiate for you absolutely matters.